Welcome back aboard Arabella, where the winter weather continues to keep Steve and Robin on their toes while they get some help finishing up the sewing work on the sail covers. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, consider supporting our work on Patreon. Click the link in the description to find out how. I feel like I want to try to film it. Down, down, dive, dive. All of them, all of them, all at once, all down. Oh, there's four left. Two, one, all down. Oh, one guy was like, pop, 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 pop. So I posted to Facebook um, looking for someone who's capable of turning Victoria's old sails into sail covers, um, which I think a lot of people will be excited to see finally go on. And uh, there's Paul with a picture of his sail ride sewing machine. He's like, is, is this kind of like what you're looking for? Yep, that's exactly it. 31 years as an insurance agent, you know, like <laughs> selling insurance and investments, right? But no, as a hobby, I like to sew things. I like to put a van together, uh, you know, mattresses and things like that. But then I bought a machine to do uh, sales, and here we are. So we got the fabric all cut, but now the hard work begins. I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it. Lily's ready. This beautiful, beautiful boat. Can't wait. This is one of the ends. We already have the angle cut into it. Okay. To match the topping lift on the boom. Uh, and then you won't worry about... Like, this is just going to end up somewhere in the sail cover. It doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, this looks great. It looks, it looks like a nice uh, material to work with, too. You know, like silks and things like that are a pain in the neck. I think the... It's super slippery. The, yeah, the, the, the thicker it is, it's easier sometimes. Yeah, looking forward to it. So we got one big continuous <laughs> zipper. This is the largest zipper I've ever encountered, I think. Yeah, it makes two of us. So, I should really check out the slides for it. I probably bought too much, but it's better than not <laughs> enough. We have two inch webbing. We have one inch webbing. Nice. Early the next morning, ahead of another storm, Steve used the extra set of hands to get the sails down and the boat moved from the end of the dock to a slip. <sighs> Well, we weren't expecting 75 mile an hour winds coming in from uh, the south this this uh, evening. Um, try to try to keep her off the dock. We gotta get her moved. Without the shore power hookup installed yet, Steve was reliant on solar power to charge the batteries and run everything on the boat. And sunny days were few and far between with all the snow and storms. Fortunately, there was a solution in the just released Anchor Solix F3800, which we're happy to have as the sponsor of today's video. Anchor just released this new battery bank. So this is their Anchor Solix F3800. 
And this big boy is designed to provide the backup power for a house. So we've had all these crazy storms and a lot of power outages. And instead of having a traditional gas generator, this is a really great option for that. Now, obviously this is a little bit too big to, uh, to permanently live here on Arabella with us. But uh, Ben, who edits all the videos, was over the moon about this integration because his house is protected by sump pumps. And when the power goes out, the sump pumps don't work and the basement floods. So this is gonna go live with Ben and uh, be an awesome solution for him for that. But for us, we are gonna put it to work a little bit here and we're gonna use it to charge up the house batteries. So we don't have the shore power plug hooked up yet with all the crazy weather and everything else that's been going on. It just hasn't been high enough on the priority list to get done. And with all the clouds you have, the solar is starting to drain, our battery banks drop in a little bit. And this is a really interesting solution to that problem. Anchors did a really good job of, of putting it on caster wheels. There's handles at the top and the bottom. And there's even like a luggage style easy tow handle that lifts up. So getting it down the dock and wrestling it down into the boat was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. If you have a single one of these units, it can put 6,000 watts of power out, which is pretty substantial. It's enough to run a few home appliances at the same time. It has all the plugs that you would normally be looking for. It's got USB in the front for your small stuff. One of these units has massive power, but if for whatever reason that's not enough output for you, you can tag in a second F3800 and that'll bring you up to 12,000 watts of output. And if you think the power is going to be out for days or even possibly weeks, you can add expansion battery packs to get to what you need. You can always charge it with solar, so that'll take 2400 watts. And when you do have access to the plug and you can charge it from the wall, That'll do it really quick uh, at 1800 watts at a time. And on the other side, it's got 120 volt and 240 volt plugs and a small stack of 110s. So we're going to plug into one of these 110 outlets and see if we can transfer all the power that's in this into our house bank. Our inverter is on, so that will charge the batteries. And now if we press this little button here, that should turn our 110 plugs on. So we're saying that we're gonna drain this battery in 1.8 hours at this load. Pretty impressive. It's a ton of power. Yeah, like that's, that's, a, that's an incredible amount of transfer. In worst case scenario, we charge this thing up and do this two times to get the battery totally topped up. Right. And the solar holds it. I mean, we just keep slowly dropping. So we're using just a little bit more than we're putting back. So this is a, this is a good temporary solution until I can get that shore power plug hard, hard wired up. And this is going to be a great thing for Ben with the sump pumps. He was static when this one came through. Uh, it'll make a big difference. He's always worried when, when it rains a lot and the power potentially goes out if he's going to be able to keep the pumps going. And I'm sure he's not the only one with that concern. Whether you're looking for a backup source to charge your electric vehicle, power everything in your boat or RV, or looking for a clean energy solution to your old gas generator. Click the link in the video description to learn more about how the new Anchor Solix F3800 is the most accessible home power system. So are we coming in here? Yeah. Well, no, actually not this one, the next one. This one? Yeah. 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 That's what they said, 54 55. The storm as experienced in the harbor here was not as bad as the last big blow but it brought a tremendous storm surge, particularly up the coast. In New Hampshire and Maine, high tide records going back over 100 years were broken, and a whole lot of damage came with it. So the boats and the docks rose with the tide. 
but uh, getting from the docks to the land is uh, a little dicey. Need your waders. Necessarily think we need all the splits, maybe just on the ends to keep them together. Okay. You know? Steve, we're gonna do the inside one and then pull it back and do the outside one on the same so we don't have to flip it again. bobbin thread on that one. Okay. Okay. That's that one, right? Alright. Alright, I'm gonna do all the steering from right here only. Yep. I'm trying to let you do it all. Yep. No, I don't. Awesome. I'm trying to do this when I have myself talk to it. Well, there are not too many jobs for Arabella that I can do in sweatpants in front of the diesel heater at the saloon table. But working on the rest of the sail covers is one of them. <clears throat> so we've got the main and the mizzen, which, you know, the two stack pack styles, and then there's the one for the jib. So, or for the staysail rather. So for, let's see, I think we have the main here. It's kind of hard to tell. So here we have the aft end of the sail, and you can see that we used some of the sewing thread and got that sort of stitched together, but we definitely need to beef that up. And that way when the slide comes down and you open the sail cover, it doesn't just pop right off the end. So that's got to get sewn shut really well. And then these ends here need to be kind of tucked in, and that needs to get 
hand stitched through here as well. This part of the sail here has got a couple layers and there's the hem and it was just a little bit too much for that machine to go through. So you gotta do a little bit of hand stitching here and this is where it will attach at the aft end of the sail and connect to the topping lift. And then at the other end, I gotta fire up the hot knife and cut the webbing back. And I've gotta reinforce the stitching here where it goes through this webbing uh, and make sure that that's really solid and it's not gonna come apart. And I need to put some reinforcement and grommets in here as well. So the pipe will go in this slot and we're gonna put a grommet below it and that'll get tied up to the mast. And I need to put zipper stops on here because right now if you were to slide this, it would just run right off and we don't want that. So there's not a ton left to do on these, but I've got a little bit. Once these are on the boat and the pipe is in here, I've got to sew reinforcements for the lazy jacks, but I want to see exactly where those land. Uh, so those will get sewn on later. So let's start with sewing this shut. So I was taught to run it through to the loop. Pass back in next to it, and then go through, I don't know if you can see that, but between the two of them, and then just cinch it tight, and let's get to sewing. So I'm not trying to do any fancy stitch or anything here. I'm literally just trying to do enough passes back and forth that this is firmly locked together. And the wear and tear of the zipper trying to open it isn't gonna be able to stretch this out or fray through it or break through it in, in short order. So I talked with Robbie Doyle and he said to bring the sail back and that they would take these slides off while we waited and throw on the next size up because these get jammed they need to be a bit bigger. And he wanted to know if I could get rid of this turnbuckle since we now know how long this stay needs to be and that would let the sail collapse all the way down to the boom instead of piling in up here which would reduce a lot of windage and make it a much smaller package. So we could get a wire made, but what I was wondering is if we have enough room at the top to add, all we need is like yay long of a sling, um, and put a Dyneema strop up at the top to finish off that wire, make it a little bit longer. And um, then we could ditch this turnbuckle, move this fitting down to about here, 
which would make this package about half the size. It'll make the view easier when we're motoring and docking and stuff. It'll be less of a big thing up here. But I think, looking up at the top, I still have at least a foot of wire above where the sail stops. So if I bring this down, I think we'll be, I think we'll be all right. And then we can get a longer wire made up if we want to do that. Um, but that'll get us in business for it now. And this changes how we do the sail cover up here. Because if the sail cover needs to be all the way up, we need to make sure we account for that. Um, so if we're going to drop it, we can make that sail cover about like half as deep as I thought we were going to have to make it. We don't have as much sail to fill. Okay.